What's up, people? Um, Snake Diet Deb asked me to do this video. I watched to the end. Am I lonely? Yes, you are, Snake Diet Deb, but thank you for being lonely. Otherwise, if nobody was lonely, they wouldn't watch my videos. I don't know, whatever. Looking forward to the workout vlog. Have you heard of this guy? He's so inspiring. Well, to me, he is. Who is he? I probably have not heard of him. But let's hear of him together. Hmm. Oh, is this the Goggins guy? Yeah, David Goggins. All right. <sighs> okay, here we go. Um, let's unmute this. Okay, so if you guys have any other videos or YouTubers that you want me to take a look at, let me know. This guy, David Goggins, he's like an ultra marathoner or something. He runs like 100 mile marathons. He used to be in the Navy SEALs. This guy actually said he, um, I, I think this rule is from him, but it's, I, or maybe it's a Navy SEAL rule or something. And they say like, when you think you're done, you're only 40% done. So I think that's very interesting, especially when it comes to like training hard in the gym. Uh, when you're like when you're done you you're only actually 40 percent done when you, when you think you're done right whatever anyway uh we'll watch this one thank you um i already forgot your name but thank you for telling me to watch this let me know if you guys have any other recommendations and, and motivation with a depressed mindset you're depressed because you're not doing with yourself you don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life you need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration put challenges in front of yourself when you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it that's when you find inspiration Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, swim 550. If some of you aren't doing you're 10% just getting off the couch. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. Let me see if I can fix myself. So I said, if I can just walk one more mile, I could be in the worst shape of my entire life. This would change everything for me mentally going forward. From this kid who came from dirt and nothing, who couldn't read until he was in a junior high school, and is now here. I went, I walked a mile. I said, hmm, maybe I can walk one more mile. Maybe I can walk another mile. At mile 81, my ex wife looked at me and said, you're not gonna make the time. When your mind knows it's not going to quit, and this is what I found out, this is my 40% rule. When your mind knows it's not going to quit, your body will adapt to whatever is in front of it. I ended up running 20 more miles, I did 101 miles in 19 hours and six minutes. And that one day changed, that one, 19 hours. It wasn't SEAL training, it wasn't Ranger School, it wasn't Delta Force, it wasn't that crap I went through. It was just 19 hours and six minutes that forever changed my life to know that we, as human beings, are capable of anything. And we don't need any special kind of parents or- Brilliant. Sad, you know, the, the sad thing about, like, he's right, I agree with everything, this guy's amazing, blah, blah, blah. The sad thing, though, is that, like, the people who actually need to watch this video won't actually watch it, right? Because nobody, <clears throat> if somebody is, let's say, living living below their potential, right? Let's, let's say it in a nice way, you know? If somebody is clearly not, if somebody's kind of just, like, given up on life, like, they're not they're not doing the things that they know they should do, um, and, and we all have areas in our life where we're, where we're like that. I, I actually, as I said that, I re remembered, like I was reminded of an area of my life that I should probably spend more time working on that I actually paid no attention to at all. Um, <laughs> but whatever, thank, thank God it's not fitness and health. Like, thank God, at least I have that. Uh, yeah, but anyway, the, the people, I guess overall, like, okay, so you have some people, you have some people who they neglect every area of their life, right? They're just like, I don't want to say useless, but like they, they, they don't have their health together. They don't have any money. They're not working on anything. They have no, like they have bad social lives. They're just like all around, like every area of their life is kind of bad. And then you have other people that maybe have one or two of their areas of their life together and everything else is bad. And then it just kind of goes up from there, right? You have maybe somebody who has like all these amazing things in their life, but they just have this one area of their life that's not handled, right? Um, as you go further down the scale, right? As you get closer and closer to the type of person who has no area of their life handled, the less likely that it is that this type of message will appeal to them, okay? Because when it comes to certain areas of our life that that we're not handling, normally we're not handling them because of fear, right? You're like you have some area of your life, you're not handling because of fear because in, in your mind, you're thinking to yourself, well, if I handle this area of my life, that means this negative thing will happen. So by not handling it, you're avoiding that negative thing. And despite the fact that that, that pain of not having that area handled is real and exists, the perceived pain of handling it or what you'll actually need to do to handle it to, to get yourself on the way is even greater, right? The perceived pain is, is leading to fear that's stopping you from doing that. So, 
you know, I, I can, I, I know tons of people. I would, I would love to send them this video, but if I sent this to them, they would get mad at me. They'd get angry. Like, why are you sending me this? I know this already. This is stupid. This is boring. Like, why are you sending me this? Like, it's, it, there's no point to watching this. Like, send me something good next time. You know, like, whatever. And, and that's why, honestly, like, I, I don't, I don't really try to help people anymore. You know, at least people who are like close to me. I mean, it depends. S sometimes you can tell when somebody actually wants to change and they just need kind of like a swift kick in the ass. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if, if you're over them, you know, berating them about doing something and then it's, and, and they do it. And then as soon as you leave, they stop doing it. What have you really done? Nothing. Just, you've just like wasted a lot of energy. Yeah. Maybe you make yourself feel better because you got somebody to do something temporarily but as soon as you're not there as soon as that stimulus is gone they're just going to go back to the way they were they haven't internalized the change is what i mean tools to get there so i hit you with this don't stop when you're tired stop when you're done thank you very much come on get it 17 you don't know me son get it 18 you don't know me son get it 19 you don't know me son yeah 20 you got the ball yeah 21 yeah get it again come on let's see it Good, 22. Who's gonna carry the boats in the logs? That's you, buddy. Come on, 23. Come on, 24. One more, Dan. Who's one more? Carry the boats. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You did it. Yeah. One thing that changed my life is my grandfather. He told me, you're going nowhere in your life. You're not being anything. As bad as that hurt me, it got me to pull my head out of my ass. So learn to stay hard, have thick skin, and do what's right. What you need is the one thing I talk about in my book, which is straight up brutal work ethic. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. And that, that, that's the hard part. That's the hard part. This isn't like some five step process where you can do these five steps, you're gonna end up with this magical world. Nah, I'm basically teaching you how to callous over your victim's mentality. This is all about the quitting mind. So what's the quitting mind? So let's say it's day one of a job interview. You have your clothes laid out, You've been preparing for weeks and weeks and weeks. You show up and you bring your best self. After a couple months, you start showing up to work a little later. You don't look as good. Your breakfast isn't ready. Your mind's getting softer. Repetition every day. Stay hard. The most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it. You walk around with it. You go to bed with it. Eventually, you act on it. We live in a world now that's so kind. We, we find a kind way around everything. Like, if you don't look good, I have to find a kind way of saying, I don't like your shirt. Right. That's not the approach. If that's the approach you're looking for, that book is not for you. Mm. Can't hurt me is not for you. The approach you have to take, at least I took, you take the approach you want. The Amazing. Oh my God. I, I guess, I guess in order to be like, to be able to spread this message, you have to like have some sort of achievement where you've like run a hundred miles or something like in order for people to not think you're a dick. You know what I mean? Like if, if I say stuff like this, I'm just an asshole. You know what I mean? I, I think I think that's that's kind of the I, I don't know maybe do people think this guy's an asshole like probably not from watching this video when he's actually just talking about the concepts in and of themselves but maybe in his in his real life where he is maybe using like direct communication to to put somebody back in line maybe they would say he's an asshole maybe I'm not sure I, I don't really know much about him um but uh honestly this is so motivating oh my god this is like I, I want to like so so yesterday I worked out and normally what I do is I'll work out every other day, right? Cause like, you know, I'll do a hard workout where I work out like actually like three hours, you know what I mean? It, that's a lot for me. Um, and then I'll rest the next day so that I'm fresh the day after, right? But now I'm thinking to myself like, why not just work out every day? Like, why, not, why not push myself a little bit more? Um, in Japanese culture, there is a concept, I think it's called Kaizen. Um, where you get 1% better every day. Let me just see if that's actually what it's called. Percent, oh shit. 1% better. Yeah, all right. It's the concept of taking baby steps on your way towards larger goals, aiming for 1% improvement each day. Okay, so um, it is called Kaizen. All right, so basically, like, this is a, a concept that, like, I guess Toyota was kind of made famous for popularizing, I guess, because they use it in their corporate culture. But um, you hear this a lot like on podcasts now and like all these like self-improvement gurus where they talk about don't don't worry about making like drastic life changing changes. You know what I mean? Like these sweeping changes, like just worry about getting 1% better every single day. And 
as long as you're able to do that, as long as you actually do that, it'll lead to like massive amounts of changes, right? Like huge. Uh, somebody did the math, right? And they told me, or I, I saw this in a video once, and they said that if you if you commit to getting 1% better each day over the course of a year, that's not 365% improvement, right? It doesn't work like that because the it's like com it, it compounds on itself. You get 1% better and then 1.1 and then blah, 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 and like whatever, like of the whole, it's it's 1% of the whole essentially, whatever, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it's it's 3,800% better, which is, I don't care what you are, or what you do or what you're working on. If you get 1% better every day, you'll be like top, top of the fuck like you'll be famous for like whatever it is you're trying to work for um you'll be like that good is the implication and that's it's it's one of these things like with all these concepts about self-improvement floating around like oh you got to get up early you got to like eat vegetables you got to go right you got to exercise you got to like tell your fucking mom you love her whatever like all this shit it's it's hard to like pick which ones to focus on but after watching this, like I, I kind of want to do the Kaizen thing. Like I'm thinking specifically of that one area of my life that I kind of need to handle <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, um, amazing. What, what else you got, David? The conversation had to be a real honest conversation in the accountability mirror, but guess what? I was fat. Don't find a kind word to say that, you know what? I've gained some weight. No, you're fat. When I couldn't read, not like, hey, you know, even learning disability. No, I cannot read. For fourth grade reading level, I'm struggling. And sometimes I call myself stupid. Not in a way to put myself down. Sometimes you act on it good, sometimes bad. You gotta change the internal dialogue. That person in your head that's talking that sh to you, until you change the internal dialogue in your head, until you callous over the victim's mentality that the world is out to get you because of you are the only, you gotta change that sh I once had that mentality that no one understands what the f I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're gonna stay in the same exact spot that you're in, that no one understands me. There's a whole, there's millions of people. Why do you think a book that I self-published, you know, is doing so well? With a story that's so f up. People like, I never came up, I went to a publishing house, like, who's gonna resonate with this story? No one's gonna buy this book. I'm like, are you not in the world? Are you not in society? You're never alone. Everybody's going through shit. So when people get this mentality of like, you understand me, you can throw a rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. A lot of people understand you, mm -hmm. but you gotta stop hiding. And that's why I tell people, a lot of people are going through shit. They just hide better than you did. That's all they did, they're just hiding better. Don't find words to make yourself feel better because that's what, so we hang around people that make us feel better, that tell us what we want to hear, not what we need to hear. And so we stay away from those people. And we stay away from those people, like our internal dialogue becomes that kind, it's okay, it's not okay. So that's where it starts, it starts with that accountability of it's not okay anymore. This can no longer be okay. And calling yourself out for exactly what you are, and exactly how you need to fix it. So amazing, again, like I'm like fucking, you know, kissing this guy's ass like nonstop, but how can you not be inspired by this? Like what, what kind of like mental, block do you have in your mind that this is somehow like you, you react negatively to this like what's wrong with you um a few things that i wanted to just to just mention right number one what what he actually says to do it kind of got lost there in the shuffle but he he recommends at least as far as i understood it to to communicate in a very literal way right where he was talking about like don't try and think of a nice way to say you're fat if you're fat right no you just say you're fat okay um like when he was trying to say like oh you can't read like you don't have a learning disability you can't fucking read you know what i mean um, and I say to do this all the time, to speak in literal terms, because when you speak in literal terms, it removes all of this like social dressing that we put on our problems so that they're more they're more palatable for us. They're less painful because, of course, humans natural tendency, you want to avoid pain. Right. But the, the problem with that is that when you when you when you have a learning disability, what's the cure for that? A learning disability. There's no cure for that at all. Like, but there's a cure for not being able to read. Guess what? You learn to fucking read, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's, it's very clear, which is, which is why I, I am such a fan of like speaking in direct terms, right? Not, not to be an asshole. Like maybe sometimes I, I let it, like I, I kind of lose my temper a little bit and I just get frustrated with, with how people um, resort to what essentially is, you know comes down to lazy communication or or i guess what it really is is fearful communication maybe a combination of the two to um to speak in a way that doesn't directly address what the problem is like even thinking of my own problem like i i even now just realized how like i was i was dressing it up on my own it's our natural tendency but if i actually look at it for what it really is the, the solution is much more clear especially if you make the commitment to just get one percent better every day those are those baby steps like anybody can do that like anybody can actually do that 
what the the problem with with doing this is that most people they just do it for like a day or two or they get one percent better like every six months if that They're like well i'm going to get one percent better so instead of eating a hundred percent of my calories from you know awful food today i'm going to have you know a glass of celery juice right and that's it and then like occasionally sometimes they remember that they like also wanted to do this so they just stay at that level of one percent better it's not a conscious effort of getting one percent better every day um very inspiring. I, I actually, I think I'm gonna go work out today, honestly, after watching this. A lot of us give total control to life. We don't have any control of it. We just give all control to life. I do this shit every morning to prepare my mind for what life's gonna throw at me. A healthy body gives you a healthy mind. That's what it's about. So if you go into battle, you wanna go into battle with the right mindset, the right gear. In combat, you wear body armor. But what we do wrong is we don't strengthen our minds. You gotta strengthen your mind, take control of that. Most of us live our entire lives avoiding failure. It's funny. I walk around, people come to me and they say, man, you that Navy SEAL, you went to Ranger School, you were, you know, Air Force Tech P, you know, you uh, did the pull-up record, you run all these ultra races, all this shit, man. The funny thing about it that I think about is this. They know that part of me. That's the part I know about myself. I felt the ASVAB test in the military three times. In the Air Force, I felt a bear rescue. In the SEALs, it took me three times to get through Navy SEAL training. The pull-up record took me three times. This is what I know about me. So what I'm saying is this. You can't live your life being afraid to fail. All those failures made me the success in the day. Stay hard, stay in the fight. You know, I'm a serious introvert. Wow. So he said he failed the ASVAB test three times. Like, no offense, like, homie is for sure, like, a, a legend at this point. But the ASVAB test, like, I, I took that. I actually took it twice because I wanted to join the American military when I was younger. Um, I took it twice. I got, like, 98th percentile on, like, everything, 98, 99. Not, not because I'm a genius or anything, but, like, that that test is lit it's like the ged it's like a, a very long version of the ged like if you can like if you can read and write and do basic math you, you'll you'll ace that test like like it's nothing you know it's not hard and he failed it three times wow that's like like you have to actually like not know how to read to fail that test you know what i mean and like not know how to do like basic addition and subtraction like that's kind of crazy um but you know what they say is that like the people who fail the most will succeed the most, right? What did he say? Like Michael Jordan, there's that famous quote about him, how he like lost all these championships and like he missed all these like last minute shots and you know, all these business owners. Like it's very common in the startup world where they say fail, fail fast, fail often or something like that. And the, the implication is that like, don't, don't try to be a perfectionist with everything. Just try something, anything and like fail and learn from, learn from how you failed, you know, which is, it, it's true, right? Like I, I kind of hate the startup world because it's so like it's so douchey at this point and it's like so like holier than thou like it's just retarded like these people way inflated like sense of like importance in the world in my opinion no offense to any of you if you're watching this but like it's super it, it's just i don't it's it's very cringe in my opinion um but that's one thing i think they get right is that like it's it's more important to try something and figure out how it doesn't work so that you can take the two or three like core lessons from that and apply that to the next thing and you can you know any of you who have like had a hobby or you know something that you've done for years and years where you put something where, where something is at risk something is at stake like a business for example um you'll you'll notice that after you fail the first time you'll be like okay like it failed because of this reason right so then when you do it next time around you make sure to handle that reason like beyond what you actually should and then you'll probably fail for some other reason right and then you repeat the process now you've got two lessons right two areas that you nail down uh, for your third attempt and it just it kind of like builds on itself over and over but if you're the type of person where you're too afraid to try anything because you're scared that like you won't get it perfectly absolutely right at all you know you're not going to make it like what do you what do you even do all day like you just like lie in bed and do nothing like okay fine you know you could be a customer your whole life if you want you know you're not gonna like you're not gonna be any you're not you're just not you're not gonna be i don't want to say you're not gonna be an important person i mean you're not gonna be an important person but you don't even have a chance like you you need to be willing to fail to even have a chance anyway let's finish this. and um very afraid of people i i uh, got judged so much growing up that this is uncomfortable for me all these podcasts you know, that's why i post once a week but the one thing i realized uh why i wrote the book is Honestly, I have a story to tell, as we all have a story to tell. And what I realized on my journey was a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve the impossible. And along my journey, I started realizing, man, I gotta tell some people about this shit, man. Like, I discovered something that some people have, 
but don't even know all of us have it. But along this way, I was like I said, I went to therapist. I became a practitioner. And I was like, my God, I'm busting down so many barriers of like I've learned this ability. Okay, but I'm catching up with everybody. I, I figured that out. I figured out all these negative things in my life that were keeping me in this hole. I'm like, I gotta tell people, man, that hang on a second, man. You Brilliant. Um so, so he's right. What, what's he referring to here? He's talking about th this ability that he has is essentially, it, c it comes down to like a continuous determination or an ever-present determination to consistently improve, right? Even by a small amount, like 1% better every day. Um, and a, I guess, determination to not quit or to, to continue working when you feel like quitting essentially so i guess you could say like willpower and hard work is like whatever you want to sum that up in one sentence and he when he says that that's in everybody that's true right not you know any anybody can work really hard right it doesn't there, there's nobody out there who can't work really hard right like fine you're like whatever paralyzed from the neck down like can't speak like fine you're fucked basically but like you're like a normal human being with access to like all of your limbs and you know, you're not, no, you're not like, you don't have like down syndrome or something. Like you, you don't have an excuse at the end of the day, because really at the end of the day, what it comes down to, sorry to like tell you all people, like any of you out there who think you're like a victim or something, it, it really just comes down to you not being willing to do the work or not having a strong enough reason to do the work. Right. Honestly, when I watch stuff like this, it makes me like, it, it makes me, I guess, realize that I'm, not, I'm actually not working hard enough at all, right? Even even as high as I think my output is, right? Because I'll do today, I think this is like my fourth, fifth video. I'll probably do maybe two or three more. Um, it's like 11.30 a.m. right now. And, uh, you know, I, before I probably would have just like, you know, laid around all day and like maybe gone for a little walk or something like that. and just kind of taking it easy, you know, just to like maintain the current level that I'm at, which you could say is all right fine it's a higher level in terms of let's say like my youtube channel is better than most other people that have a youtube channel i, I don't know actually like probably not the top people but most people don't have 1638 subscribers who have, like most channels are really small um but that's still it's still not good enough you know my level of fitness is is better than most people but it could be better. I can improve by 1% today. I can, I can go, you know, do I have to like run to the gym and do my fucking three hour workout? No. I mean, I think I might cause I, I feel pretty good, but it, it could even be just enough as like me getting 1% better doing hundred pushups. Like that could be 1% better. And then the next day I'll do 101 pushups, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? But it really, I guess what it really comes down to is just the presence of mind to continuously improve. Not even really the dedication, but just like reminding yourself that you should do it because at the end of the day what's one percent that's nothing that is actually nothing like i don't care what your problem is you weigh 500 pounds guess what one percent better is literally like getting off the couch and walking around the block right and maybe the next day maybe you walk around the block like twice like oh my god that's so hard and the next day maybe three times four times five times you know what i mean and before you know it you're getting like these like small incremental changes they start to add up and then you know what you did before is too easy so you move on to something that's a little bit harder love it thank you who told me to do this snake diet deb thank you snake diet deb i love this video i love david goggins i don't know if it's going to change my life but i'm probably going to work out today so anyway you guys have any other recommendations for videos or youtubers let me know leave me a comment peace